everybody out there, this is Seto, and today guys, before I start today's video, I just want to mention is something that dawned upon me when, before I made this video is that this is actually the first video I think you've ever seen me in glasses, uh, with glasses on that is. Um, I'm actually wearing my glasses right now because the camera is falling away and I'm making sure it's at the right angle and things like that. So yes, it is me, I'm just wearing glasses <laughs> because I actually have to wear them because I can't see long distance. Uh, interesting fact about me. Not a lot of people know I wear glasses. But besides all that, uh, today guys we're going to talk about does it seem like every new set that comes out in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! is contains within it a tier one deck nowadays. Now granted I'm not talking about power I know power creep is a thing and power creep has been around since Metal Raiders. You know, when you had Legend of Blue Eyes, which was a whole bunch of vanilla vanilla monsters, then you had Metal Raiders and then spell uh, magic rulers. So I mean, it, it, it's been it, it's Power Creep's been around since the very first three original sets of the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. So that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just it seems like each set that comes out now contains a tier one or deck within it, or gives the power for a tier one deck to emerge. Um, it just feels that way nowadays. Now maybe it's because you know I'm looking at it from a broad perspective here, but let's just look back at the past year. So first off, we had like gear. We had Mermails, Fire Fists, things like that. Then we had Gear Gia, and then we had Hat, which stepped into the ring in, I guess you could say May June era, and you had Hat Dot Deck and Fire Fist Dot Deck. You know, Fat, and then you have now you have uh, Shadows, and you mainly have also Burning Abyss, and then in the background you also have Stella Knights. Um, but especially Burning Abyss and Shadows, people were predicting long before these decks came out that these would be the best decks of the format, and they were artifacts, lived up to the hype to some degree, Shadows lived up to the hype to some degree, and now we're going into the next set coming up here in a couple of weeks, and that's being with Quilaports, or those paper clips, or seashells, whatever, they're, they're machines that are pretty much the first good, solid pendulum deck to come out and people are predicting that they will be a tier 1-esque deck. Now I'm not talking from a competitive stack standpoint even, I'm just saying does it feel like that each set that comes out here now contains a tier 1 deck? Granted you have to keep in mind at the time the set was released what people thought of those archetypes. People did not really think Burning Abyss was going to be you know with just three or four cards, uh, don't forget their trap card, but you know, that came out in Duelist Alliance, but the three are good cards that they still run, that that deck was going to be a tier one deck right off the bat. People did not predict that. We were predicting Shadals, maybe Stella Knights, but Shadals were going to be the best deck of the format. And to some extent, they're up there with Burning Abyss, but doesn't it seem like every set now is a tier one, has a tier one deck coming out of it? Now, what are some of these possible reasons why this is happening? Maybe it's because we have shorter formats now. Uh, from my recollection, for the most part, you know, every when we had six-month formats, it wasn't, you know, Konami pushing this, you know, the every single set brought another, you know, tier deck, a tier one deck that came out, which pushed the older tier one deck out into the sidelines on the perimeters of the Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, I guess you could say competitive community. Um, it, it kind of pushes it to the sidelines. That's what it feels like now. You know, we don't see artifact. We don't see hat because the meta has completely changed. And with each set, granted, the meta will change, but it just seems like it's very, you know, drastic <laughs> to some extent. Now, this is just me observing for the sidelines. I'm not saying that this is the per, you know correct thing. You know, this is completely true. I mean, this is just me observing a painting of a wide. Uh, painting of the Yu-Gi-Oh community throughout the last year and a half since we changed over to a year now from six month formats to these three or four month formats. It just seems like every set, you know, tier one deck coming out, tier one deck coming out, tier one deck, you know, with this powerful decks coming out. Granted, this is all hype, but it always seems to come true lately. So, but back in the day, it just didn't feel that same way. You know, you would have the six month format and that deck would reign supreme and then, um, it would change over, but you know, when the new uh, ban list was released, it may last into the new format because people were still trying it out. Same thing happens nowadays, but it just feels like it's changing over a lot more quickly. Now, 
this is probably also due to the fact that we have shorter formats and things like that. And granted, I like change. I like you know things changing up in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, shorter ban list. I like it. But it just feels like every set now is a tier one deck. So, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that a lot of sets that come out nowadays contain you know just a deck that Konami is trying to push really hard that we can tell months out that this is going to be a good deck. This will be a possibly tier one deck in the competitive community. So what are your thoughts on this? This is just some food for thought. That's all it is. And until next time, take care. Have fun dueling. Good luck dueling. And I hope I look okay in glasses. <laughs> but take care, everybody. Seto Kaiba. I'm out of here, guys. Till next time.